We are now using image-guided programming tools uh, in order to optimally define the um, site of stimulation before we start clinical programming in patients. And this has substantially cut down our time of programming from several hours uh, that we need for finding the optimal stimulation space by um, clinical response mapping as compared to a few minutes if we use uh, image-guided programming tools. Well, currently visualization tools help us to visualize the electrode location in patient-specific uh, individual MRI space, which means that we can delineate from a high-quality MRI certain target structures such as the basal ganglia or the thalamus or other structures. Uh, and we can then um, visualize from CT the uh, actual electrode location within that space. And we can use modeling tools in order to um, visualize within that patient-specific um, model uh, the presumed extent of activation um, by uh, deep brain stimulation parameters. Uh, what is missing in this kind of uh, patient-specific anatomy is uh, the function, which means that we don't have an account of um, the areas that are most likely uh, suppressing particular symptoms or causing adverse effects. And these kind of um, response maps can be derived from large data uh, of multiple patients and could in the future be implemented into these kind of programming tools to make them a real expert system. The main challenge of um, visualization tools in deep brain stimulation is that you need an individual anatomical model in order to predict uh, certain outcomes um, with certain electrode positions. And that kind of anatomical model has to draw on individual MRI data, but this individual MRI data with current MRI technology can never be uh, fully inclusive of all structures that you would like to visualize. And therefore, visualization tools need to draw on uh, ATLAS data Atlas data that needs to be morphed and merged into the individual uh, patient space and on individual uh, patient MRI data. In this integration, the um, uh, ability to, uh, to come up with a conclusive yet um, very concise model of the individual patient anatomy is really a challenge for the software. Yeah, there are basically two aspects that need to be improved in uh, current visualization softwares. One is um, to improve the patient model and to fill gaps in the anatomy. Uh, if you look at the models that we see of individual uh, patient data, um, they are hugely <laughs> void of uh, white matter, which means that we have to include more fiber pathway models and, and data on um, the connectivity uh, between sites but also large-scale connectivity because deep brain stimulation is always impacting upon a circuit, not only on local structures. Uh, so this is one way of improving the individual uh, patient model. Um, the other aspect that needs to be improved is the inclusion of functional data, which means that we need maps uh, that tell us, at least on a statistical level uh, in large patient groups, where to stimulate in order to achieve optimal symptom suppression for certain symptoms, um, but also uh, where not to stimulate, which areas to avoid in order to avoid adverse effects. We have seen an increase of studies that have uh, tried to locate so-called sweet spots, which means um, areas uh, within a target volume that are optimal in providing symptom suppression or so-called avoidance spots, which means areas where we have a maximal likelihood uh, to induce adverse effects. Um, on a local level, this can be very helpful. Uh, however, there is a problem because deep brain stimulation usually targets fiber pathways, which means 
that um, anywhere along a fiber pathway you can elicit a particular response because that fiber pathway is connected to a network and uh, whether you stimulate a fiber uh, at a certain site within let's say subcortical areas or uh, more proximal to a cortical target site for example would always elicit the same response. Uh, therefore, I don't believe in sweet spots. I think there are um, probability areas where you are more likely to activate you know, certain fiber bundles, for example. And we have to start thinking in terms of networks effects of deep brain stimulation, which means that um, you know, ideally a future visualization tool would allow to probe um, local stimulation and demonstrate the activation of large-scale brain networks. And then there are, let's say, certain um, maps that you would like to activate, certain connectivities that you would like to favor in order to suppress a symptom. Uh, and that pattern of activation could be matched uh, with an ideal activation map uh, that is derived from, let's say, functional imaging, for example. And that would definitely bring us to the next level of image-guided programming. I think for a patient, uh, it is very important to have comfort with deep brain stimulation, which means um, a reduced time of uh, achieving good outcomes, um, reduced time of um, adverse events uh, that may be really frightening or bothersome to the patient, and all this can be achieved by visualization tools. Basically, uh, one is um, simulating certain responses within a patient-specific um, anatomical model and one can already eliminate certain parameter choices that could potentially lead in clinical reality to um, unintended um, effects of deep brain stimulation. So I think that is giving safety uh, to the patient in terms of programming. It also um, provides um, of course safety aspects to the programming for physicians that want to be efficient with their programming time and so it's a win-win situation between patient uh, and, and physician uh, in the management of deep brain stimulation.